Time now for Reporters Roundtable to put the headlines in perspective. Bud and Ross both still with us. Ross, I'll start with you. President's popularity remains down. Bernie Sanders was here in Dallas last week, making nice with the DNC after that rough year in 2016 that he had. Is there a dominant Republican or Democrat that Texans are following, though? I think it's probably Greg Abbott. Uh, you know, you could argue for Ted Cruz, you could make an argument for Dan Patrick, but you know, the governor is usually the leader of the pack in, in Texas politics. What do you see, bud? Because I, there it doesn't seem to be a, a wide field. I agree. I think Greg Abbott and John Cornyn are the only two Republicans that seem to have across the board popularity in the party. It, people look to them for leadership, although there's been that stress in the Senate. You know, the Democrats, you know, I, I think Julian Castro and and then who? You know, uh, Beto O'Rourke, though, has more name ID now than Ted Cruz did at this point in his winning campaign. And let's, let's talk about that as well, too. Ross, you mentioned Ted Cruz. The Lyceum poll out last week showed that Ted Cruz was losing to Joaquin Castro for Senate and the lieutenant governor's race. Mike Collier and Dan Patrick is a dead heat. Any reason to believe this poll? Well, I think it's right, but I think it's not polling the right people. They asked all Texans and not just, all, they asked all Texas adults and not just registered voters and not just likely voters. So the screen on this was a little bit broad and it's awfully early. You know, people aren't going to be really running for these offices for months now. And the uncertain category is pretty large too. Well, a lot of people don't know and they can't name people, particularly in the, in the Senate race. But the the, uh, you know, there, this was a poll of 1,000 people that represented 28 million Texans. Well, 28 million Texans don't decide who's elected, who decides is the 600,000 voters who swing a Republican primary. Those are the only people that really make the decisions about who gets elected in Texas. And as uh, Ross mentioned, we're still a ways out uh, as well, too. Ross, you know, we usually see Empower Texans endorsing the, the Freedom Caucus, Tea Party, far-right causes. Lately, though, they've been drifting a little farther to the left. What's going on? Well, I, you know, the Republicans are split. You know, we've talked about this before. There's at least two parties inside the GOP and maybe three parties inside the GOP. And depending on the issue, you know, they look left or right of each other. They're all pretty conservative, though. But what, what do we see now? We see Empower Texans, Texas Fiscal Responsibility, uh, endorsing a lot of candidates in city and school races. Some of them uh, are not as uh, hard right Tea Party as the candidates they've backed in the past. Then we see the Democratic Party coming in, uh, state and local Democrats, with their own endorsements of, of candidates who have a Democratic voting record. So we see a a everybody playing. Uh, every election is partisan, even though these elections technically aren't. Well, wow. gentlemen, thank you guys very much. We appreciate it. And thank you for watching as well. We are keeping an eye on the John Wiley Price verdict. Jurors resume negotiations in the morning. Hope you have a good week.